Hey everyone, well I posted a video on my main channel, Hertz Cottage, on this generator here, and I had it running and I show it basically working, but I don't go in detail on how it's actually put together. So on this channel here, I like to do more of the electrical stuff or the tinkering around. Maybe most people aren't that interested in this stuff, so I don't want to bore people on my main channel. So I'm just going to show you here basically how it, you wire it up, how you hook it up, and it's pretty simple. We're just using a DC cooling fan motor. This is a DC cooling fan motor from a GM car. Th these are very common motors. You can find them anywhere. And so what I've done here is I've connected the motor to the weed whacker. And this is a pretty easy conversion here. The shaft of the motor is directly connected to the shaft of the the engine in the weed whacker here. So what I use, I use a little coupling. It was just a little, it had one screw where I could tighten onto the motor and another screw I could tighten onto the shaft of the actual engine on the weed whacker. So here's the motor here, basically the same motor that was used on the weed eater generator. So every weed eater or weed whacker is different. So you're gonna have to then use some strapping or some kind of uh, little little uh, thin stock, maybe eighth inch steel stock, and you can just connect into these holes here and then mount it to the actual case of the the uh, weed eater. And so basically what I've done, this is just a piece of rubber tubing. It's not going to work as your coupler, but it's just an example. So basically you're just connecting two, these two shafts together. And this here, you have to remove this off the shaft. So Basically, um, you can actually hit this with a hammer and it'll crack and hopefully it'll crack or you can take a puller and then pull it off. So the best thing to do is to actually pull this off. You can also twist it. If you take the motor apart and you can hold on to the actual uh, armature, then you can just twist this off. So you're going to have to do that to get this off. If, if you pry on it, you're going to damage the motor. If you put a screwdriver up underneath of it, you're going to damage the motor. So you don't want to, you don't want to do this. You don't want to put too much tension on it. And these motors are really easy to take apart. If you want to take them apart, you just pinch these little, um, crimps here. You can see these were, these were flattened over, but all you got to do is just pinch them and then you can pull the motor apart, but you don't have to do that. So what you're going to do is after this is off, if this is in your way, then you're going to connect a coupler. So imagine this is a, as a coupler here and it'll have a screw. It'll tighten onto this shaft. And so the best thing to do is to actually flatten out this shaft here. You're going to flatten one edge. That's what I did with, with mine is one of the edges is, is flattened off. So if, if you see a motor like this one, you can see the shaft has a flat side there. So the actual, um, coupler is going to lock into that and then there'll be a little screw to tighten onto there. So that's how you're going to want to clamp that onto the shaft uh, so it's rigid. You could also take a piece of steel like this tubing and you could slide it over this one here and then you could do a, a slight weld and then you could weld onto the motor as well onto the engine and try to keep it keep it as balanced as possible. So there's, there's many ways of doing this but you could take just a, um, a piece of stock and you could drill two holes and then thread in two little bolts. You can make your own coupler if you want. So once you've got your motor connected to your weed eater, then you want to put a meter on there and you want to check the voltage coming out to determine which one's negative and positive. And then you're going to mark the wires so that you know which is negative and positive. You have the two wires here on this particular motor. And then if you're going to want to charge a battery. You're going to want to use this as a battery charger to give you a little boost. Um, if you're stuck on the side of the road, you can start this up and connect it up to the battery, but you're going to have to have a diode or the motor's then going to spin. So you can see here on the, the one I built, I put this diode here. This is a fairly large diode. This is out of a home amplifier. And you can see that it's blocking the current. Uh, the current can't go back from my cable here and so it can't go back down into the motor this the line here is then blocking and what i'm going to do is i'll show you on this one how it's connected so i have the positive wire here and i put the diode on the positive so i've connected it this way where the line here 
is out to my alligator clips that go off to the battery. So you have the line here, current doesn't go back, flow back into the motor. And then I have the this long black area just goes to the actual motor, uh, positive wire of the motor. So if I take the power supply now and I touch up to the motor directly, it'll spin and short out against the side of the motor. But, <laughs> so that's working. And But if I try to touch it to... Um, to the diode, then nothing happens. So on the wire of the diode here, you might want to put a fuse holder, so you can get an automotive fuse holder or whatever, and then connect up a fuse or a mini breaker like this one here. And also, you might want to hook up a, a um, cigarette lighter or something. And I've just put a cord on here, and this is just a 16 gauge or whatever lamp cord and then I've connected on two uh, alligator clips and I've indicated the positive with the red and the black as a negative so there's no problems when you connect it up. This one here, this is pretty uh, crappy how it's put together. You can do a lot better job. You could put this all inside of an electrical box or something and make this nice where it's not all floppy like this. And it works fine. So that's all you really got to do. That's basically all there is to the to the generator. It's pretty simple. The wiring's pretty simple. Um, it's it's not too difficult. So if you can get a hold of some uh, maybe a mini breaker or just a fuse holder, a automotive fuse holder or a glass fuse, you can find that anywhere. A cigarette lighter, you can find that anywhere. Canadian Tire has it. You just cut the end off, connect it up. So away you go. You could maybe even get a unit where, that has a fuse already on it. Um, and then the diode, you can get that at Radio Shack or the source. Uh, also, you can get that out of power supplies. If you do have a free engine sitting around and these motors or whatever, you can find them, then it'll work okay. It'll get you out of jam. You throw this thing in the trunk and away you go. You never know. So. Well, that was just a video on the weed eater generator and thank you for watching.